Hi everyone, Dr. Peter Jacob and I'm here. I'm putting up this video for the uh, various issues or topic in the maritime industry. Uh, I'll be receiving a lot of uh, messages, email regarding various topic. People want to learn much more. Uh, so that's why I'm putting up this video as an introduction to the various issues in the maritime industry. Even though this video is aiming at the new beginners, those who are, are new in the industry, uh, but it's also relevant for those who are working uh, in the industry for a long time. Uh, you will learn a lot from me. There's a whole lot you learn from this video. Uh, so feel free uh, if you like this video try to share it among your colleagues and also in this video I'll be using various books uh, but the main book that I'll be using more is Alan Branch Element of, Sh Element of Shipping uh, so, so this is the book I'll use more and because this topic is very broad I try to break it down into models and then out there I'm starting with model one which is a symbol trade and American transport is functions of shipping. Functions of shipping is about transporting product from where the utilities are low to where the utilities are high. And with shipping, make it possible for us to receive the product that we're using today at a very affordable price. It's taken by the clothes that we wear, the cars that we drive around. These products are manufactured hundreds of miles away, but they are transported to wherever we are having it and using it at very affordable prices. Uh, so without shipping, half of the world will freeze and another half will, will starve. Uh, that is because if, just imagine if there would be airplane that have to fly all these products around. Airplane can carry only limited tonnage uh, that they can carry and so the whole mass population will not be able to receive it even if we receive it the prices will be too high that we can afford it but we ship it it is very easy for us to receive this product at a very affordable prices with type of cargo that the ship can carry uh, any product that you can take off, ship can carry it right from the small product to the huge uh, product. So uh, whether it be in computers or the a whole plant or a, a whole factory, ship can carry platform or whatever. It is, ship can carry basically almost everything. In terms of the percentage of what tonnage, uh, what trade in terms of tonnage that the ship carry, ship carry about 99% in terms of volume. Uh, so I say 99% in terms of volume because you may be seeing different figures in different book. Uh, some book may be talking about 85, uh, 95, uh, 95, 90, some even 75 but pay attention to what the book is saying either the book is talking in terms of volume or in terms of value uh, but over here i'm talking in terms of volume because if you compare to what uh, just compared to airplane what a, a airplane can fly around the whole year carrying a single airplane flying around the whole year carrying in terms of tons if you compare just a single ship bigger single ship can carry that per one voyage so yes in terms of turning 99 percent of the world trade is carried by ships Cost of uh, maritime transport. Maritime transport is the cheapest among all the modes, and that is also because of the, the technology that we are, the technology, the advanced technology that we have, and also with the efficiency that we are achieving in the industry, also through technology. Uh, so because of technology, it's uh, easier for the industry to build the bigger ships, and so the bigger ships are carrying a huge amount of tonnage per a single voyage. That means they, they, they enjoying economies of scale. So meaning a unit price per product is drastically reduced. Use, and that's why we are receiving the product at a very affordable price. And also because of technology, uh, we are achieving efficiency. So ship coming into the port, we are having quicker, quick turnaround time. Big ships coming into the port, spending uh, six hours or even less than six hours in the port, and it's moving. And the, the terminal operation, cargo handling, is very efficient because of the advanced technology and advanced equipment that we have in the port. But I must say, the shipping or the maritime industry also have environmental impact or uh, the other side of impact on the environment. However, they, they, again, if you compare with the maritime industry to other modes of transport, uh, the maritime mode is the cleanest among all the modes. But that is not what you see with the view to the public. The public perception or the public view is the maritime mode or the maritime transport is the worst polluter. But that is not that is not true. In maritime is the cleanest among all the modes. And the reason why the public has this perception is because when there is an accident, for example, if a tanker grounded or the, a tanker has a pollution and there's oil spill into the ocean, you will see the damage that it caused to the environment. You see fish dying, you will see bears dying, uh, you see the beaches polluted, people cannot go to the beach. So you see clearly the, the damage that is causing to the environment. And that is the reason people have this perception that mar maritime uh, mode is the worst political but in, in that is not it, it, it is the cleanest uh, it is the cleaner road is the worst but because we don't see uh, the damage that the cars are causing in our environment so we, we don't see it they 
public only see maritime transport as the worst, but it, it is a cleaner. And that is also why the International Maritime Organization, IMO, is there uh, regulating the affairs of uh, activities of ships to make sure the ships are operating very efficiently and also environmental efficiently. And that is the reason why they are putting up uh, measures in place with regard to the type of uh, fuel uh, that ship can use. So in certain geographical locations, ship cannot go there by using any other uh, oil. So we are the shipping, the maritime industry is striving to get cleaner as that what it is now. Shipping is a global industry. Why shipping is a global industry? It's a global industry because it involves a number of countries. So ship move from one country to another country, one jurisdiction to another jurisdiction. Ship is not like a car operating within just a single country. So ship move around the globe, trading from one port to another port. Uh, so we, which means if a ship is moving from one port to another port, then there might be a regulated body to regulate the activities of shipping. Because if each and every single country is going to set up their own rules around regulation that if a ship is coming into my port, the ship have to comply to all these rules and regulation. It will just be difficult for every single ship to comply with every country's rules and regulation. And this is going to slow the operations uh, because captains and his crew, they will be focusing much more on rules and regulation, learning rules and regulation for every single country that they're visiting. So they will not be doing the main job, the main task that they need to do. They will not be focusing on it because they have to comply. If they don't comply uh, with every single country's rule, uh, they may be in trouble so they'll be focusing on it so because of that we have the regulatory bodies international regulatory bodies regulating the activity in the maritime industry as i mentioned previously is the imo international maritime organization setting up rules and standards for the industry to comply with so imo rules and regulation that is, is, is set, setting it's not a boundary it's not a bound if uh, rules per se but as a country if you adopt and enact these rules then it become a binding force so IMO's rules and regulation is it's not compulsory on every country that you have to comply with it unless as a country you ratify it and enact it in your national law then it become a, it become a binding force on you that you have to comply with those uh, standards that IMO is setting so the IMO standard uh, is a standard that you have to comply with you can as an individual country you can choose to go above it but you can't go below it so if you adopt and enact these uh, rules for example if IMO say a, a particular ship have to have 11 crew working on but if you are a member of IMO, uh, you can choose that. Oh, I want to, uh, for safety reason, we want to decrease it from 11 to 9 or 10. No, it's not a setup, but you can't go below the bar. You can only increase it. So you can choose that. Okay, instead of 11 crew working on board as a nation, we want to increase it to 12 or 13. That is acceptable. So you can increase it, but you can't go below it. And so IMO is also there setting up the safety uh, regulation, the safety rules. So you see, as I mentioned earlier, shipping is the cleanest and safety of highly safely operated uh, uh transport uh, so shipping is, is clean uh, we'll talk much more about this with regard to all spillage and other thing in the as we proceed and with in terms of the world fleet any type of ships uh, uh that you can think of ships a type of ships ranging right from the uh cable laying vessel to the uh, the bigger uh, carrier. So uh, ships, as I mentioned, them, ship can carry basically almost everything. So we have various type of ships. We'll, we'll talk about these in, in the next uh, models where we're talking about type of uh, cargoes and the ships. We'll talk much more about that. In terms of the uh, freight market, the freight market is very volatile for shipping. Uh, it's very volatile because the freight rate is not stable, uh, especially when you look at the box setter. The box setter, the freight rate is very volatile. The freight rate might be high this month but three months along the line you may see the freight rate dropping drastically so especially in a dry box setter it's very very volatile so shipping as a whole whatever setter it is it is not it is not uh, very stable the market is very risky for the shipping industry Look at the relationship between the GDP and the symbol trade. Uh, so in this graph over here, I want just want you to focus on the two the two middle line that is the GDP and then the symbol trade. That is the blue line and then the black line. The black line is the GDP and then the blue line is the symbol trade. So I just want you to focus on these two. Can you tell me the relationship between these two? What can you see? What relationship can you see between these two? Yes, yeah, so uh, with GDP, you will see that any small increase or decrease in GDP will cause more than triple increase or decrease in civil trade. That is the blue line. So any small increase or decrease in the black line will cause more than triple increase in the blue line. And can you tell me the reason why, why there's such a, uh, 
uh, relationship or such an effect, such a magnified effect on, on the civil trade, if there's any increase or decrease in GDP, will cause such a magnified effect on the civil trade. What is the reason why we have such a relationship? Can anybody, anybody have any idea? Yeah, it is simple. For example, let's just take uh, in the, this classroom, we need a table here. So the table that we're using. Uh, so uh, GDP is the buying power of the world. So if we need, we demand for this table, we would need this table to use in the classroom over here. That is the demand, that is the GDP. So for us to get this table, the materials, the timber that need to be to, to, to use to manufacture this table, the timbers will be exported from certain country into import in the country where the manufacturing is going to take place. Once the the tables are manufactured, the table also will be uh, shipped back to wherever the consumers are that we need it over here to be shipped back to us. So you will see that just one demand that we need for table will cause export of raw materials to the, uh, the timber, the table is uh, manufactured and the table will be ex ex uh, exported back to the consumers. So you will see that just one demand will cause more than two uh, for the symbol trade. Again, if you take it a step further, for the table to be manufactured, even the factory needs to be built. The factory needs to be built. So for, for the factory to be set up, again, that also calls for raw materials to be imported into that country to build up, to set up that factory. So you realize that just the table we need, the factory needs to be to be built, and also material, raw materials need to be imported to construct a table, to build a table, and after the table is built, it has to also be shipped uh, to the consumer wherever they are in, in the world. So you see that just one the, the demand calls for more than three or twice of the civil trade demand. So you, you see that is why any small increase or decrease in GDP will have a, such a, a magnified effect on the civil trade. 